In my previous video about remote viewing, I mentioned that we had technology 20 years ago that allows common, untrained people to open up their ability to remote view and have psychic impulses. And that is absolutely true. I wasn't just being cute. Exposing the world to this information is part of the reason I'm on social media in the first place. Now I've kind of tap danced around, but let me get right to the point and teach people exactly how to do this because I feel that humanity is running out of time. The main resource on this is going to be remote viewing with the artist Ingo Swan. Neuropsychological profile, electroencephalographic correlates, magnetic resonance imaging, and possible mechanisms by M.A. Persinger. I'm also going to draw very heavily from the book Sacred Pathways, The Brain's Role in Religious and Mystic Experiences by Todd Murphy. Dr. Persinger, Todd Murphy, and myself are all neuroscientists. We're all academically trained in neuroscience. And to understand psychic ability and to understand how to unlock it, you need to have some basics of neuroscience, which I will take you through quickly. And in order to show you the relevant technology, we're going to do the rest of this video in my lab. To understand why some people have psychic experiences and some do not, even though we all have capacity for it, you need to understand that neurologically there is something in the brain that actually locks that down. In neuroscience, there is something called the 40 hertz component. It is a signal in the brain that runs from the thalamus around the brain this way, front to back, front to back over the top. This signal is also called the binding factor because it binds you to your sense of self. So when you're awake or when you're dreaming, that signal is present. The 40 hertz signal is present when you are you. When you're in a deep, dreamless sleep, that signal is not present and you are not you. Now, this binding factor also seems to lock in your normal repertoire of conscious ability. When the binding factor is disrupted, your brain is open to new states of consciousness and subtle perceptions that your brain normally ignores. So Dr. Persinger studied the remote viewer Ingo Swan, who was the pride and joy of Stanford Research Institute and remote viewing circles everywhere. When Dr. Persinger brought him into the lab, he disrupted that binding signal in Swan's brain and Swan instantly got more accurate and had better hit. Moreover, Persinger replicated the experiment with untrained students, and those students got accurate hits as well. This same premise was used not only to allow the brain to access non-local information, as in remote viewing, but also to take two different people and allow them to interact with one another's minds. So the bottom line is, by interrupting the binding factor, you can open up clairvoyance and telepathy and other things. 